uh, when President Kennedy was shot, I happened to be the one that fell heir to Lee Harvey Oswald, the prisoner that shot him and interviewed him. And then when they, we had so many threats that they were going to take him away from us and so forth, uh, we decided to move him down to the county jail uh, for safekeeping. But uh, when I got ready to move him, I told him, I said, Lee, if anybody shoots at you, I hope they're as good a shot as you are. <laughs> <laughs> He kind of laughed and he said, well, nobody's going to shoot at me. But uh, that was kind of the wrong answer for that question. And it told me what I'd already figured out. He was doing what he was doing for publicity and trying to make a name for himself. Well, he did, but he didn't live long enough to uh, uh, enjoy it. And as I walked into the basement with him, I could see Jack Ruby in a crowd. He had got in through a, a break in security for about 10 to 20 seconds, and he had the pistol down by his side here. And all of those reporters and uh, police officers were standing all around. None of them saw that. But as soon as I walked in the door, I saw it, and I, I tried to make a move on him, and, I, and he stepped toward me. Uh, and I grabbed him by the shoulder, but he fired that one shot that hit Oswald in the, in the stomach. But his finger was still working on the trigger trying to get off another shot when my partner on the other side grabbed that cylinder on the pistol with his right hand and his wrist with the other. And, and uh, if he and my partner hadn't, hadn't grabbed that, he'd have got off one more shot and Bobley too. And if he'd have got off one or two shots, both of them would have caught me right along in here somewhere. So my, I owe my life to my partner for that day. <clears throat> and we, uh, when I got him out and took him, got him to Parkland uh, to be uh, looked at on the way out, I was riding in the back of the ambulance with him and trying to get a pulse on him, but I never could get one. And about halfway out there, he moved and groaned a little bit and then went completely limp, and I've always thought that that's when he passed. But the doctors out there did not pronounce him dead until 1 o'clock or 1.05, I believe. So when I wheeled him into the operating room, the doctors were all standing by because they'd been notified. And what the bullet had done, it hit him, he hit uh, Lee about three or four inches to the left of the na uh, navel, went through the stomach and cut the vena cava in the back, come on through and it took a chunk out of the liver, hit another main artery over here on the right side, and then it hit the end of the seventh rib, which devoted it again, and it come back to the front, and it ended up about three or four inches to the right of the navel. We just made a circle and uh, when I examined him the bullet was pushing on the skin so tight that I could take it and roll it around just like that with my thumb and finger underneath the skin. So when I got to Parkland with him, I doctors grabbed him and started to work on him. I told him, I said, I, I want that pit, bullet out of him before you do anything else. So he pinched it up and hit it with a knife and it popped out. And then I took a pocket knife out and, and gave it to the nurse standing there and had her put her initial in the butt end of that bullet. And I said, you and I, somewhere down the line, are going to be testifying that this is a bullet that came out of, of Oswald. Mm. And we did. I testified two or three times, and I know that she did at least once mm. on it. But uh, that's, that's about the end game. Of course, there's a lot more investigation went into it. But, uh, Okay. That, that's the main thing that happened to him.